Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mall. I'm going to do a podcast today on using metric conversion factors, uh, how to remember them and how to use them. So we're going to go ahead and get started with a couple examples. First off, we need to know when are we going to use these metric conversion factors. Okay, so we're going to use these when we are, whenever we encounter a problem where we're asked to convert from one version of the base unit to another prefix of the same unit. Now this happens in, uh, in the lab all the time. An example might be we take a measurement of 25 centimeters and we go to kilometers. Um, so how do we know if we're going to use this metric conversion table? We look at that base unit here and we notice that we're converting from one version of the base unit to another. Now base units aren't just going to be meters, they could be seconds, they could be grams, they could be liters. Um, there's other uh, versions, it could be meters. So any um, SI unit, um, any metric SI unit, we can use these metric prefixes for. Okay, so we're going to do these two different problems uh, and see how we could go from one to another. So what we have here is the metric staircase of science. And this staircase is something you might want to pause this and write in your notes because you're going to be able to use this um, to go from one unit to another, okay, any base unit to another. Remember, base units are seconds, grams, liters, uh, meters, etc. Okay, there's a whole bunch of those. So how are we going to use this? So let's say a problem says you take a measurement of five meters and you want to convert that to micrometers. So notice on the right side of this staircase, okay, on the right side here, all this stuff on the right side. All the stuff on the right side is talking about uh, units that are less than the base unit. And otherwise, in other words, all of these units represent measurements that are smaller than the base unit. A centimeter is a hundredth of a base unit meter. A millimeter is a thousandth, ten to the negative third, of a base unit or of a meter. So all these ones on the left all represent uh, different base unit prefixes that are bigger than the base unit. Okay, so kilo, 10 to the third, is a thousand meters. Mega is a million meters. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and convert from one to the other. I take that measurement of five meters and I want to convert it into micrometers. So I'll start here. Okay, so I'm at five meters and I'm going to take my five meter measurement and I want to convert it to this much smaller unit micrometers. Now asking yourself just from the beginning, if I take five meters and micrometer is, is remember this whole side is smaller than a meter, I'm going to have a lot of micrometers. I'm going to have more than five, that's for sure. So how much more than five? The beauty about metric prefixes is they all are based on powers of ten, which are awesome. So every single step represents a power of ten. So what I would do is I would take this, and it's already in scientific notation, 5 meters, so 5 meters, and I look at my conversion chart, meters is 10 to the 0, micrometers is 10 to the negative 6. So what's happening during this conversion is the size of my unit is going down. We're talking about smaller units. The size of my unit is going down. So what has to happen is I have to have more of them. So my value is going to go up. And I look at the difference between these, uh, these two different, base, these two different um, metric units, and the difference is 10 powers, or 6 powers of 10. So my value has to go up by 6 powers of 10. Okay, that was the difference between these two. That was how many steps I went. So I have to have a lot more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I had 5, uh, now it's going to be 6 powers of 10 bigger. Okay, 5 times 10 to the 6 micrometers. That's how I could do that. Okay, you'll get some more practice with this, but let's try another, uh, another one. Um, let's do 25 centimeters. Now what I would do is I'd first write this in scientific notation. Uh, whenever you're doing these conversions, it will make things a lot easier for you. So this is 2.5 times 10 to the 1 centimeters. So I'd like to convert this to kilometers. So I'm over here in centimeters, and I need to go back now to a much larger unit, a kilometer. 
So I have these little 25 centimeters that I've measured out, and I want to express them in terms of kilometers. Kilometers are huge. So what's happening is the size of my unit, okay, the size of my unit is going up this time. Okay, I'm, I'm actually talking about a bigger unit. So that means that I must have my value actually has to go down. Okay, those little 25 centimeters are going to be a very, 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 very small part of a gigantic size unit, a kilometer. So I need to look at the differences in powers of 10. Centi is 10 to the minus 2. Kilo is 10 to the minus uh, 10 to the third. So the difference between these two, one, two, three, four, five steps. Okay, so my value has to go down by 5 powers of 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this 10 to the minus 1, or 10 to the 1, excuse me. Oops. 10 to the 1 has to go down uh, 5 powers of 10. Okay. And then that's going to be 10 to the and then we're going to go ahead and subtract 5 powers of 10. So this would be 10 to the negative 4th. So 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4th centimeter would be our final answer. Okay, simple way to do this. Okay, count out how many steps you travel and then uh, go ahead and, and take a look at that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to remember these. Uh, you don't have to memorize this, but if you like to, you can. I made up this mnemonic. Mini kangaroos bounce down Candy Mountain's magical ninja parade. Okay, sounds uh, amazing. What this is, is it's just a way to remember the different uh, prefixes. Okay, starting with mega, kilo, base, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, and pico. Okay, so there's all the different powers of 10, starting with the biggest, mega, 10 to the 6th, all the way down to the smallest, pico, 10 to the minus 12th. So if you like to, you can use that. If you don't want to memorize this gigantic stair step, you can maybe make this mnemonic. It might be helpful. Last thing I'd like to show you is a different way to solve these problems. So this is called the conversion factor method way. Using that same table, what I would do is I would convert to the base unit and then use a conversion factor. So let's go ahead and try an example. 5 meters, put a little x, like other conversion factor problems, so we're going to go ahead and use this conversion bubble. And I want to get to micrometers, and I want to get rid of meters. This is handy because I know a conversion between micrometers and meters. I look back at that table and I notice that one micrometer is equal to 10 to the minus 6 meters. Now that conversion, that little stair step, has that information locked in there. Okay, and it's a key thing to remember that if you use that table, make sure you put a 1 in front of the prefix and not the base, okay, because that table is talking about how many powers of 10 of the base unit is that prefix. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 here. In 1 micrometer, there are 10 to the minus 6 meters. So I punch this in. Uh, I divide this out, my units cancel here, and I'm left with 5 times 10 to the 6th micrometers. Okay. This way it works too, same answers we just got. Okay, let's do this next one. Now, this one's a little bit trickier. I'm going from centimeters to kilometers. Now, if you notice, using that staircase, you can take how many steps and figure out how many powers of 10, or you notice they both are talking about meters, so you actually could do kind of a little middleman step and convert to the meter. So what this might look like is a two-step conversion problem. 2.5 centimeters. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of centimeters. I'm going to go to meters. Because the, diff the thing that centimeters and kilometers have in common are the meters. So you can always go through the base units. Okay, Make a little note to yourself. You can always go through the base unit. So if you wanted to, you could do something like this. I'm going to put a 1 next to my prefix right away. I look at that table, and on that table, one centimeter is how many powers of 10 of my base unit? 10 to the minus 2. You might be able to punch that in your calculator as 1 times 10 to the minus 2, if you want. Okay. Same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and centimeters cancel, left with meters. Last step is going to be to change from meters into kilometers. We're going to use that same table. Meters on bottom, kilometers on top. 
I know the relationship for these two it's on that table. So I'm going to put a 1 next to my prefix and then figure out how many meters are in a kilometer. Well, in a kilometer there are a thousand meters, 10 to the third meters. So now my units of meters can cancel, divide by 10 to the third, and I'm going to go ahead and punch all this in. Now remember, this 2.5 centimeters at the beginning, I'm sorry, was times 10 to the 1. It's always a good idea to convert that to scientific notation in the beginning, Okay, which I forgot to mention. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now if you want to, you don't even need to use a calculator. Uh, 10 to the first, I look at this one here, subtract 2, so now we're at negative 1, and then this third is on the bottom, we make that to a negative 4, so 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 kilometers. This is a crash course, uh, and I hope it was helpful. We're going to get some more practice with problems like this. Um, bring your questions to class, and I hope this was helpful.